Hello viewers, and welcome back to War Game Red Dragon. I'm your host, pp Chu, and we're back by request to check out some multiplayer uh, battles in a multiplayer commentary video. So, anyhow, um, you know, by request, you guys, uh, the viewers, have wanted, or had wanted to see some more uh, War Game Red Dragon, either as a campaign or a multiplayer, and I figured I'd do some of the, uh, the multiplayer stuff right now. So, anyhow, I loaded up the game today, found a few good games through the, uh, the Reddit TeamSpeak channel there, and with that said, one of the people there gave me a really, really nice uh, deck combination, and I wanted to show you guys that. It's, uh, it's quite a specialized, a power play Soviet Union deck. Um, um, given, uh, or rather, before today, I, I didn't necessarily really like any of the Soviet uh, armor or in general any of the, the heavy Soviet Union's uh, equipment there, but uh, after today, I think um, this has a ton of promise, and it's definitely a very, very effective deck, provided that you can uh, play cautiously, play with uh, with your guard up at all times, and in general, I think it's a, it's a really great uh, way to snipe off units here and there inside the destruction game modes. So, starting off, the, the name of the game is Destruction. It's a 3v3 or a 4v4 on a 3v3 map titled Amaze in Japan, filled with uh, rough um, hills and mountains here and there with little bits of forests um, spread all around the mountain passages, so it makes a very, very deadly map. So, um, a central idea behind this deck is the units inside it will be fairly high cost, uh, rather high point costs um, compared to what I usually use, but in uh, in respect to that, I think that a lot of the units here are very, very effective. So let's slow the, ga slow the game down to 33 times, and I'll show you guys some of the units that I'm using right off the bat here. Um, starting off, we have our troops here going for Boris. This is the uh, this is the zone that I plan on capturing and well I brought a single helicopter here with rocket pods to deal with ABCs amongst other things I bring some recon in the form of the uh, the default uh, whatever re recon infantry the Soviet Union gets here in an oral truck and well two of the uh, the power or rather one of the most uh, powerful units inside this deck is oddly enough these BMP3s and I think this is one of the units that do get overlooked by a bit namely it's quite expensive at 34 five points per infant or per group and that is with the infantry I, I believe these eventually costed me right around 50 points to buy though the thing about them is if you take a look at the stats for the BMP3 namely it has a great uh, ATGM system hitting up 2.8 km with decent accuracy high penetration power it has a auto cannon to deal some damage not too much nowadays with uh, with balancing patches and all to planes and it also has a 100 millimeter cannon that ranges quite far away ways to deal with infantrymen so these things are definitely very strong especially added to the fact that they move where they are in an amphibious troop they are mechanized just mechanized no no national lock there and they have an inherent speed of 70 uh 70 uh, kilometers per hour there. So we buy that, in the back I have a, a single pair of T062 napalm uh, throwing tanks, and I have a single Strela uh, unit, but we'll get back to these units soon enough. Right now, I want to show you guys this play. So this is the SU-27PU um, flanker. It caught, it's, uh, it's definitely a very expensive vehicle, coming in at 190 points, and recently I've been seeing a lot more NATO air rushes, so what I like to do is that uh, if we take a look at the unit again, it has um, quite a comparable or uh, a very um, competitive anti-air setup on it. But the main thing is that for its uh, strengths, it has a very low turn time. It has uh, a very high ECM, high air detection, and high speed. So this is definitely one of the um, one of the best fighters for the Red Force side, and I usually use them to try to gain intel, use that high air detection, high speed, high ECM to find helicopters just in the event that my enemies are trying to helicopter rush me. But luckily, but uh, over here something happened that I think you guys will quite enjoy. So I see this Hornet, I see these planes coming in. First things first. Managed to take out a eagle, granting us 170 points right off the bat, right off the start of the game. One of the enemies' is, uh, top air units has been eliminated right there. Following that up, we get a few more missiles off, and I believe we take out the Hornet here in just uh, in just a little bit here. Or no, it could be this F uh, F40 as well. 
Yeah, it looks like we got the F40. That's another 150 points. The Eagle, or the Hornet, unfortunately, makes it out before our two missiles can hit it. But that is a nice... 290 points off right at the start of the game taking out two of the very rare uh, planes for the enemy's forces right there now moving forwards the reason i bought um the the flamethrower here and the heli over here is that on this map on uh, Amazing Japan lots of people depend on the road system early in the game and I mean it makes sense these roads enact fast movement and in general they're good locations to get you the early game edge as we see here and um, in my lines that is no different but inside Boris a special uh, or actually arguably inside all of these narrow valleys a select number of circumstances make these areas really easy to uh, or make these pushes really easy to counter and I'll show you guys that there we're here inside this area so um, starting off we have some flamethrower tanks to clear out the town we have a helicopter to take out APCs with its rocket pods and some BMP threes which with 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 uh, with great ATGM and um, HE gun capacity so here's what I do I drop the helicopter into the very center of this forest, and namely, this will give some simians of uh, cover for the plane, and namely, it pinholes the helicopter so it can so it can deploy what is effectively linear shots right into the middle of the road the the road here, and moving forwards using the great speed of these BMPs, I drop these off inside the side little um, areas around this road so I can use their HDGM uh, capacities to hopefully pick off a few enemies troops and here we go the enemies are arriving and would you look at that they are arriving inside a column so here's what we do send over the uh, the bmp3s they carry six missiles each so they have a uh, quite a long um were a, a short or long what, what am i looking for here uh capacity for I, I guess fire longevity there and that effectively deals with a few of their vehicles going up next the rocket pods stun everything that gets near the town once the fusiliers are dropped, the BMPs get off their initial shots, taking out, stunning those guys, and the flamethrowers effectively finish off the troop there. And this could be avoided, of course, if um, our enemies here probably set up his defensive lines inside the uh, the back ranks, back uh, ranks over here. But in general, on this map, a lot of people like to move forwards. So um, overall, we clear this area. We, uh, we get rid of the fusiliers. Unfortunately, we do lose one TO62 in the process. Got uh, the the single last sole survivor of that uh, Fusilier group managed to pop a shot and take out one of our TOs over there and at this time I pretty much have control of Boris and this associated area oddly enough they um, they bring in the command vehicle along with his troops so um, I see that the, the enemy's lines here are pretty much broken so I'm using the speed of our fast BMP uh, P3s and the reconnaissance ability of our infantry here to spot any other uh, potential targets here now um, yeah the opponent who was fighting on this side uh, I guess wasn't uh, you know a happy day for him so he had uh, actually left at this point here but anyhow this um this is effectively this area completely rolled up so what i'm uh, what i'm expecting coming from here is that I'm, I'm expecting the enemy to bring in some more troops to try to recapture or reform some line of defense here and in the meantime i have two priorities i want to find that cv i want to destroy it it wasn't inside the bushes over here so i'm going to assume it's inside this map cluster over here and i was right at the end and the second thing i want to do is that i want to try to force some infantry into the back ranks of my enemy's lines here and I want to figure out what's in charlatan because in this deck I have some very strong uh, artillery which will be able to knock the living crap out of the CVs and the artillery pieces and the FOBs back there so um, moving forwards from there I think we, we yeah we do find the enemy's CV somewhere inside these bushes or perhaps it was taken out somewhere over here but anyhow as you saw there there was one unit that my helicopter found got taken out and the game uh, really goes from there now, um, talking a little bit more about the deck, in just a few moments, you will see some of the, uh, rather, you've already seen some of the great um, positives of this deck, but unfortunately, um, the units that you get inside this deck have a very, uh, have a very, very limited uh, capacity. Typically, you have pa uh, packs of like six of these BMP3s and all that, and in general, in, in terms of air power, I think I only have five planes in total split up a between C 
speed, anti-air, anti-ground. So definitely not a lot, especially um, the move here. Actually, I think I'll fast forward just slightly. Um, what had happened was that... Oh, we also pick out a uh, an M1 Abrams on the road here. I don't know if you guys can tell right off the wreck, but we got um, a single M1 A1 Abrams HC or something like along those lines. But um, yeah, we get one of those over here on the road. And my ideas for over here was that I wanted to set up a line of defense. I wanted the Moto Strecky infantry to ambush everything coming down the road. I wanted the BMP3s coming inside the back here to guard the um, the open areas, if you will, here. So, anyhow, what happened over here in the forests areas moving forwards was that I lost my recon team, and oddly enough, I lost it to a longbow helicopter. So, in my mind, I thought I'd send in my SU-27 to pick it out, but unfortunately, I see the Hornet, I wanted to adjust, and I wanted to fire off at it. So, I did. It hit it, but unfortunately, my plane made the turn, I wanted to make it bail out, go to my own lines, and unfortunately, it was taken out. So, in this situation, I think I overextended my forces here took uh, too big of a risk and with that said I lost my only uh, dedicated air superiority fighter for 190 points but bear in mind that it did take out quite a few uh, of other other targets as well there so moving for forwards from that pace I decide to reinforce my lines and I wanted to see whether or not we can send out a few more troops to probe the enemy's uh, side here, his uh, his flank over here, so I decide to buy a few more units and see what I can do. And um, that actually, that delay led to quite a nice trade here as well. So coming over the, um, we're rather getting a little over, you know, or, you know, uh, we're under cautious, we're getting a little risky here. My opponent decides to bring over the longbow to try to harass my BMPs with the missiles here. And well, with that said, what had happened was that, as you can see, I have a nice uh, anti-air vehicle hidden over here. So I pop it out, put a few shots into it, and boom, 150 points right there. Unfortunately, it manages to grab one BMP-3 and the Strela, but I think at the very end of the day, that trade went uh, pretty well for what it's worth. Right, so moving forwards, I mean, um, inside Wargame uh, Red Dragon here, one of the big things is reconnaissance. So I decided to make a few more probes. I wanted to use my infantry here and the uh, the flamethrower tank here to namely clear out this mountain passage. Um, going off of the little uh, blips here, as you can see, a lot of action is happening on this flank, our left flank. Although not a lot is happening inside the central area of the map in my flank. So what I decided to do was that I wanted to make a few probing uh, efforts and wanted to clear up this area. So namely, I want to burn these forests uh, with the TO tank. And uh, once I found his rangers over here, I sent in our, uh, rather, I sent our infantry to suppress them and I get the tank to follow up and burn them out for good. And in general, that is um, this little blurb of time here. Um, being that I lost the Strela, I decided to move in some more anti-aircraft uh, goods here. And I also buy a few more reconnaissance uh, units to just keep around because I figured we might have... Uh, we might make a push through the mountain passes here any moment. I could send some reconnaissance guys through it. Or alternatively, I can uh, check over here. So my uh, my opponents on this flank, he brings in Navy SEALs, which are of course these uh, these elite reconnaissance infantry armed with grenade launchers, uh, meaning that they're very very strong against other units of uh, infantry. W and speaking of which, I only have these Moto Strelki 90s over here. So what uh, what I've done here is that rather than fight the good fight and lose uh, another squad of my infantrymen here, namely lose 15 points, what I do is that I pull my units back, I bring up the BMPs, and I unload my recon group right here in the middle of the field so that hopefully our BMP3s again they're fairly uh fairly versatile units. I want to use them and their strong cannons, which do 3 HE damage uh, per shot, to hopefully finish off those uh, those Navy SEALs over here. So these guys are still trying to move up on my infantrymen. I get them to brawl it out for a little bit, drawing them in again. And all in this process, I am just waiting for them to come out of the forest there and to give my BMPs a nice clear shot at them. And that effectively cuts them down. 
these BMPs, I think we, yeah, they reload pretty fast as well. They have 10 reload, uh, 10 rounds per minute. So there we go. So that's, uh, that's gr that group of troops right there. And moving forwards, I noticed some more uh, small-scale uh, encounters over here, namely some infantry and some, um, and a single APC. So I decided to really just push forwards, no biggie. Use the TO uh, flame tank to great effect, burning the areas around it. Um, but unfortunately, they bring through a helicopter here to counter uh, our guys. And I think overall, yeah, we do take out the helicopter as well. So in this uh, moment, there was, um, I, I think I was paying attention to over here. And I think our infantrymen just snatched that um, when both me and my, uh, my, my opponent here were uh, away from that location. So that was that. And over here, as you can see, our uh, we our BMP threes here managed to shoot a few rockets at that tow, um, but it didn't hit it, unfortunately. Here, I don't really know if we did get it or not. It doesn't look like we did, so um, that's that. And from the looks of it, yeah, it's going to take out our BMP there. Right. So moving forwards, let me let me uh, let me see what we did furthering from here. Further uh, going from here. Oh, that's right. I buy some artillery, and the enemy starts to make a few pro movements of himself. And he starts to move some infantrymen or some riflemen over the top of this mountain and starts to uh, enter our areas down here. So with that said, in the meantime, I'm I'm trying to help out my allies on this front because as you, as you can see here, in Gregory, it's uh, it's just a melting pot of troops really. Um, so that's one thing that I was dealing with. The, uh, the other thing is that over here, what I did was that ultimately I brought in a recon helicopter, the MI2, pretty basic one, very good reconnaissance ability, low health, high or uh, low health and low cost there. And I also bring in another helicopter here, the MI24V. And again, this deck has this uh, this central theme of being quite expensive in its troops, um, but having definitely a, a, an edge in the troop quality here. So namely, I just want to grab something with rocket pods so that I can gun down the the, uh, the infantryman probe in our lines over here, and that is exactly what I do. Checking out the artillery inside this uh, deck, I have some of these guys, the um, the the Mista ones, and these are very long range artillery pieces. As some of you guys um, may remember from back in the day, I usually prefer rocket artillery, but these things, given their uh, 130 point costs, are fairly expensive to what I'm used to. But the thing about them is that they have a high HG power, they're very accurate, and they uh, they they seem to be able to shoot practically from the edge of one map to another. So we have a few of them there, and I use them to effectively pick off uh, whatever targets I see in Gregory, because I see a lot of those four unit clusters, which are definitely very, very juicy targets. So um, in the meantime, I'm just harassing these infantrymen, I try to pick them off and in general get rid of them. And oh no, my flame tank is trapped up here, but that's no big deal. And we effectively get rid of uh, the guys over there. Now, back inside the fighting here, what is uh, what, what's happening inside Gregory is that, or rather, what usually happens inside the area of Gregory here, is that either the the team coming from our end grabs the little mountain pass here, or alternatively, the enemies spill over and it effectively devolves into this giant battle for the uh, for the town here. And, uh, well, as you can see, uh, the, the second out of the, th the, uh, out of the two options there are occurring, and it is effectively a melting pot battle there. I'm trying to use my artillery to pin down any units which seem to be uh, stationary, and in the meantime, I'm trying to probe the enemy's lines once again to try to find a inherent weakness in their defense. Now, this was the thing that I was pretty curious about. Uh, my opponent brought in a Apache and a uh, Kiowa uh, recon helicopter here, and I, I thought about going for this, so I was moving my Strela forwards to hopefully pick it out um, in, in some time, but my ally decides to bring in an SU-27 to pick it out, and I genuinely wonder whether or not this was a trap or not, because from, from, um, from my perspective, this could have been a bait, could have been bait, um, evidently, it looks like, yeah, my opponents had a few of these eagles, uh, flying about, and I really wanted to, just in general, avoid that fate, and unfortunately, um, yeah, this SU-27, I believe it gets picked 
off given the the circumstances here but it may have made it out alive so yeah my opponents dropped down two planes here an eagle and a weasel and from the looks of it no the uh, the su-27 there did make it away so at least that is good and uh, yeah that's really this area over here I think l I get one lucky book shot off at this eagle which manages to hit it well no maybe not no it didn't hit it uh, anyhow in that case now never mind there but yeah I bring up two books to put on top of these uh, mountain areas just so that I can get some coverage in that regards now, in the meantime, I see that they're bringing up more Abrams, so I decide to harass them with my uh, Hilo here, the one that took out the infantry units. And <laughs> effectively, it's uh, a battle devolves over here between the strength, or the, the penetration values of my missiles, my ATG and missiles, versus the Abrams uh, armor. And unfortunately, uh, well, as you can see, the Abrams wins there. Secondly, I bring up some of these BMPs to hopefully take it out with some more of these of those high pen um, missiles, but none of them hit, namely due to the fact that uh, this map area is just filled with little bits of terrain that um, do offer great uh, it, that do play to the uh, to the advantage to the well, what am I saying here the defender's advantage there. So, uh, moving forwards from there, yeah, I buy a SU-25T Frogfoot from uh, from DCS World and all, and this is a yet another expensive plane. Again, I only have one of these, and this was technically, I guess, one of the more dedicated um, air-to-ground roll uh, planes. So it's a 200-point unit, making it one of the most expensive planes inside the game there. And well, namely, it carries. Uh, it carries 16 of those Vakir missiles that hit almost up to 3.2 KMs. They have a high accuracy, high pen range, but um, one of the biggest things about this plane here is its AP, or its uh, reload time there. It has a reload time of 0 seconds, at least uh, that's what the game says for uh, for its reload time, meaning that it should be able to practically shoot off these, minute, these missiles as fast as it can aim here. So it picks off that Abrams and it bails out and gets away. So overall, grab they dropped a few points there, but um, I think not too many if you factor in the uh, the troops that we lose in that uh, front right there. And this is very very close to the rest to the end of the game. And I don't think any major plays happened uh, during this time. We trade a few planes. I think we grab the uh, the command vehicle inside the Mitri. They decide to move out a few more units inside my sector. Those are accordingly dealt with. But the main area of focus has been in the center zone. For for the vast majority of the team here. Namely, I wanted to help out and I brought in some BMPs amongst other things and well, that was uh, that was pretty much the end of the game there from the looks of it. So anyhow, that is uh, that is one game. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, multicolored player commentary and I think we'll, uh, we'll do perhaps one or two more of these in the coming days here and there. So, so I hope to see you guys there, and you know, be sure to like and subscribe if you have not already done so.